You're probably here because you want your session clips to look like this. Or this. Or maybe this. Long story short, you don't want your session clips to look like this. Welcome to the video. We are here playing session, as you can see by the fact that we're playing session. Great intro, Garrett. To my surprise, I actually got a ton of amazing feedback from you guys on my most recent recent from my most recent session street park alongside some of these you know amazing positive comments i also got a lot of people asking for tutorials and asking how i did certain things and even playing skater xl i watch milky's filming tutorials in skater xl and i haven't seen something like that for session yet i thought it could be fun to give you guys a little tutorial before we get into it though i want to do a tray flip and then i want to do a laser flip all right <laughs> that's all i wanted to do before getting deep into the the filming and the replay and all of that i do want to make this clear there is no right or wrong way to film in any video game even in skateboarding you know it, like skateboarding in general skateboarding games included are about freedom of expression and creativity and doing whatever the fuck you want to do to be honest however that being said there are certain rules you want to follow that can help make things look better and then you can develop your own style off of that so take this whole video as like a a baseline and then from there develop your own style mess with it this is just my style you might even not like my style my style could suck to you this is really just the bare minimums of filming in session so the first thing here i want to do we're gonna go over fisheye and long lens let's start with long lens let's find a spot to film and i guess the, the, here's your first lesson long lenses are usually used for single tricks doesn't mean they have to be used for single tricks there's plenty of people that film on you know vx's that or even just any camera that strictly use a long lens you can film lines with it Re relative rule of thumb is it's really good for single tricks that's how i use it in my style let's do i don't know a kickflip front board first step is doing a good trick i've been experimenting with this a bit too you can here let me actually turn on my controller overlay so i can explain this a little bit better same as skater xl there's two ways to get into a grind you can do what i normally do that was a terrible example but where you use the trigger for body rotation so if you watch my controller overlay to do a, a 90 like you would to get onto a, a board slide you pop turn the trigger and it rotates your body or you can use the sticks like that i don't know if you guys are watching my controller overlay it does the same thing but it moves your legs as opposed to your body again it's style preference whatever you want to call it here's with the trigger you get in you use the trigger to get out and then here's with the sticks you use the sticks to get in use the stick to get out and it, it i think it looks more fluid we can do like a little comparison i've been experimenting with both of them lately using the sticks your body stays as it would facing the rail and your your lower body your torso is what's turning i think it makes it look a little bit more natural and that this is new for me i've always been using the trigger so i'm gonna try to use this method more we're getting sidetracked let's do a kickflip front side board slide so first step to filming is to do your trick i ended it off with a little back 180 because why not you open up the replay editor and we're gonna go through this quick it's not a difficult process i'm gonna show you how to do it step one is to trim the clip so i'm using the triggers to go through and select the start point and end point you always want to leave yourself a little leeway on both ends of it you can always trim it later and then clip it so this is the old the whole clip we have i'm also not going to go crazy in depth on the actual key binds or whatnot it tells you everything on the bottom of the screen like if you hold rb it'll bring up more options lb will bring up more options it'll turn the montage view on and off as you click things the menu down there will adapt and tell you so i'm not going to go too much into key binds if you have questions answer them below i mean ask them below i'll answer them next thing i do for long lens clips is the field of view also known as fov i do my starting keyframes and ending keyframes first meaning whatever you want the camera to start on is your first keyframe so we're at the beginning of our clip right now i'm probably gonna over exaggerate this one 
and go pretty zoomed in, in here on at 20. And then before any of that, you got to figure out where you want your filmer. I guess we can just have ours for example purposes. And it can just be like, honestly, at the bottom of the stairs right here. We're on the FOV layer right now. We have our first keyframe in place. Now we go to the very end and we do our last keyframe, which uh, I'm going to do something a little experimental here. We'll zoom in even more to around 15. We'll change the camera angle in a sec. After doing the first and last keyframes is when I do the filler keyframes. So I want to do one right before he pops. And this one honestly barely zoomed out. Just so you know, you can see the rail he's about to hit. You have him in frame. You can see a little bit behind him. And then I do one right before we land. And this one, oops, the wrong one. This one's zooming out more because I want the landing in frame. I want him in frame and I want the background in frame. Now it's it's zooming out as he approaches and hits the rail. It's zooming in when he lands. And then you can scrub through it and see. Again, we haven't adjusted the camera yet. This is strictly the zoom. Honestly, I don't like this one. So I'm just going to delete that one. And I think, yeah, I, I like that better. Now the fun part. Now the actual camera movement itself. This is where your creative freedom can run free. Again, the way I do it is first and last keyframes first and then fill it out through the middle. So for this first keyframe, you don't have to do this. I want mine to start up here where we're panning. Think of your cameraman holding the camera. What's he gonna do? I envisioned that before I film it. I picture my guy aiming up in the sky. He hears the skater coming, pans down, films the trick and then pans away after the skater lands the trick. So that's what we're going to recreate. So our first keyframe is just going to be, you know, up somewhere. I'm going to add a little bit of rotation just because it makes it look a little bit less like a video game. And we're adding our keyframe there. Now, let me fast forward all the way to our last clip. We find where we want the camera, essentially. There's our skater. So I said we pan past him into the ground. We can go under this car here, add some rotation. Boom, keyframe. Now, if you scrub through, it's going to look like absolute dog water because you're the whole <laughs> the, the skater's not even in the video yet. So now we go through the middle and fill in those keyframes. I pretty much always follow the same format where I add one right before our skater pops. So we'll add one here and we scrub through. I add one right after he lands usually. So we can add it there. Straighten the camera out a little bit. Keep them in frame, keyframe. And then you test it. You see what we're working with. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, we clearly need a filler one here because we want the camera to go left, not right. And we'll go through the middle of these two, find our skateboarder and keyframe away. After that, it's really just a matter of adding keyframes, removing keyframes, changing keyframes, obviously. And you, okay, here's a good rule that I usually, that I try to follow. The less keyframes you have, the smoother the footage will look. So only add keyframes where you need them and remove any keyframes that you're no longer using. Rule of thumb, I try to always place my keyframes in between other keyframes. So for example, we need a keyframe here. Our skater's cut in half. I go in between these two keyframes, pan it up just a little bit, find movements, and add a new keyframe. And that fixed that, uh that down issue. So now using everything I told you, um, you just add, delete, add new, delete old, add new, delete old until it is smooth. And it takes some experimenting. It takes some getting used to, but let's, let's work on it. All right. So I'd say I'm content with that. I removed this first keyframe here just because again, the, the less keyframes you use, the better. So it smoothed it out a little bit. So it just goes straight in. We pop, get in, land, follow him there. And then camera pans down to the ground. So that's the first layer. That's our camera layer. I try to add essentially something to every layer. Long lens, you're going to use more layers than you are fisheye because long lens, you're dealing with a zoom lens, meaning as you zoom in and out, AKA as your field of view changes, you need to adjust your depth of field, which would be your focus ring on your camera. For example, parts like this, where our dude's out of shape, <laughs> out of shape, <laughs> I thought I meant to say, our dude's out of focus. Uh, you, so you, you can play with it two ways. You can use it artistically to make your guy out of focus if that's the look you're going for, or you can use it to make your guy in focus and make the background out of focus. Again, let your creativity roam free. What I'm gonna do is I'm going over here to depth of field and we're making a starting keyframe and adjusting it until our foreground is in focus because I like how that looks. Because we did that though, we may be out of focus. Uh, we're actually not. I am gonna make a keyframe here though because I want the background out of focus because I like that look. We got an expensive lens on our camera right now. 
I want it more out of focus. All right, now I'm finding the balance between what keeps us in focus, but what blurs the background slightly. And I'd say that's it. Yeah, it looks good. And I'm checking if we need keyframes here. Right now, you can see the, the background's a little bit out of focus. I like how that looks. And then here we go out of focus, which I like. I'm going to leave that instead of... Uh, instead of keeping us in focus, because I like how that looks. Our depth of field layer is finished, our camera layer is finished, and our FOV layer is finished. There's one or two more, depending on what you want to do. So far, this is what we have. Looks decent, but you can still, there's a lot of imperfections that make it look like a video game. My favorite layer is the camera shake layer. You can add this keyframe absolutely anywhere unless you want it to change throughout the clip. I just keep mine consistent, so we're gonna add 20. I, I like it because dude, think it, your dude's holding the camera. He doesn't have a gimbal. It's all VX footage. That's the vibe I'm going for. So our dude's swinging. He's had a couple beers before filming. See how that looks. I think that looks good. Once it actually plays, you notice the shake a lot less. It just adds a little bit of life to the footage. Watch it again one more time. That's much better already. It's looking a lot more human. From there, you can choose to add things like slow motion. This is all preference. I like to, so we're adding one there, one there, one in the middle, make that like 20%. You guys know this. Then it'll just slow-mo the kickflip itself. That's just if you want to. And then lastly, I want this to be in the sun. So we're gonna change the time of day a little bit until it's brighter. I like that. Our final clip we've been working for the past 27 minutes to film is this. There it is. Do you like it? If you don't, that's fine. Alter it and do it yourself. Seriously, that, that's why I've been holding off on this video for so long is because there isn't a right way to film. And some of you may think that looks like shit. I, some of you may think it looks amazing. It's just a matter of what you want your footage to look like and then you go from there. I tried to late flip out of that. The key takeaway is regardless of if you liked how that footage came out or not, there's three takeaways. First is keyframe placement. You start with beginning keyframe and ending keyframe, and then you fill it out throughout the middle, deleting old keyframes as you go, adding new keyframes as you see fit, and your goal is as little keyframes as possible. That'll make the smoothest footage you can. Number two is camera placement. And this sounds dumb for a video game, but with a, with a simulator, you really are going for the most realistic video you can the most realistic filming so maybe don't have your camera floating in the sky look around and see where a cameraman could actually be standing and base your shot off that number three is an interesting one and the more perfect something is the worse it'll look and what i mean by that is this let's do a a flat ground tray flip right and let's film this long lens super quickly what i mean by that is if we start with our dude dead center in the frame right directly in the middle perfectly centered we place a keyframe there for our first keyframe whoops wrong one sorry we place a keyframe there for our first keyframe we go to the end of the clip we play some smack dab in the middle again no camera movement we're just following him directly at a keyframe and we go to when he does the trick we keep him perfectly centered dead middle of the screen and set a keyframe you'll see the issue here it looks unrealistically perfect. And that's what a lot of people, both in Skater XL and Session do, is they'll always keep their person in the middle of the screen because that's that's correct. That's where he should be. But if you're thinking real life, you're never gonna perfectly keep him centered. So it's like, if I were to film this, you know, I'd have one up a little bit off center, add a keyframe there. For our middle keyframe, maybe we accidentally turned a little bit, scooted back, pointed down. And the final keyframe, he got ahead of us. He's going faster than us now. He's uh, way up there, a little bit more rotation. Boom, something like this. Here's the final result. I think it looks more natural. I added a little bit too much camera rotation. I don't think I would actually tilt that much. You see, what, you see what I mean? It makes it look more human if you have them in different aspects of the screen. And we're going to talk about that more with fisheye filming, which brings me to my next point. Let's do a little line over here that we can film. Let's make it daytime, though. So first, I'm just... I'm evaluating my options right now. I'm seeing what tricks I want to do. Maybe thread the needle through that. So maybe a uh, kickflip, back tail, fakey, switch 180, and then a back heel over the final one that can be our line simple as that same concepts apply we are going to trim the clip and give ourselves some leeway so right here can be our first clip bing bong boom it is now 
footprint. We come on over here and we change our camera to the fisheye camera. You can choose fisheye, you can choose fisheye wide. I like the way fisheye looks. Bada bing, bada boom, there we are. Same concepts apply. I think filming fisheye is easier than long lens. Long lens is my weakness. We do our first and last keyframes first. So our first one, honestly, again, I'm gonna have this stupid pan up from the ground just because I, I think it looks cool. Now we go over here and find our final keyframe. And again, this is where you're using, using your noggin comes in. If you're filming, you have a camera guy holding the VX. How is your cameraman going to get over this? He's not. So I have to decide now if I want my cameraman to swing around and go through this opening and follow him here. Or if our camera guy just stops at this one and films him. And I think I'm going to do that one, honestly. So our last keyframe is going to be honestly here because like, he's just stuck at this ledge. So we'll angle it up a little bit. Have them in the left side of the screen and then keyframe. And then we go through and we fill out the middle. So obviously we got to catch up a bit here. We're going to pop towards our ledge. Oh, and then this is the, the whole centering thing I was talking about. I never have my dude in the dead center of a fisheye because you never do in real life. I, I think about it. If I was holding the camera, I'd have my dude off to the side. I think it makes it look a lot more realistic. We'll be up a little bit, angle it slightly and add a keyframe there. That gives us that pan up effect that I wanted. We're going to go through and fine tune it. I do one once he gets on to that trick. This one's going to be a low angle. He's probably going to be on the left hand side of the screen now. Something like that. Added another keyframe. We pop out and then one more here. We can follow him. I'm going to want to change that last keyframe. I'm realizing now, but we can do that in a sec. And now this keyframe is now changing to like he goes up. We'll go way up there. The rough draft is this. Obviously needs some work, but now we have our base keyframes in place. And now comes the fun part of fine tuning them, adding new ones, removing the old ones, and just making it look more natural. I'll literally just like talk through this one as I go so you guys can see my thought process. Right here, I want to be behind us more. So without adjusting the angle of the camera, I'm just scooting us back, slightly back right there. So now it's just a slower pan up. I like that. The bottom of our board is getting cut off here. So again, I'm going in the middle of these two and just pointing it down. So we're in frame and adding a keyframe. And now we're in in frame the whole time. And I like how that looks. As we pop out of this, we get cut off for a sec. So in the middle of these two keyframes, I'm going to move it back a little bit, something like that and play it through. Boom. I like that. And this is what I was talking about where it's like the, the perfect, the more perfect something is, the worse it looks. Yes, I could go through and fix the fact that my wheels clipped there. But I'm thinking in real life, if I had just landed this, I wouldn't want to do it again because my homie fucked up the filming. So I like it. And that, that's just my style. You can totally change that if you want to. I just think it adds a little bit more real life to it. But I'm actually pretty damn content with that. I feel like we're a little keyframe heavy in the beginning though. Like something right here. Maybe delete this one. Yeah, that already looks better. So see what I mean by a lot of the time just going through and deleting keyframes that already exist. I am going to change this one a little bit. And I want to add one here that brings us lower just for a sec. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think I think we're set. I fine tuned it to my liking. I added the keyframes where I think they needed to be. I'm pretty content with that end result. So it wasn't a sick line, but I'll take it. When you're filming fisheye, there's no field of view or depth of field you have to change because like in real life, there's no zoom on a fisheye. It has a, a set focal length. You're not adjusting that. So all you got to add here is your camera shake. Again, this is totally up to you. Let's see what like shaky shaky looks like. We're skating on bricks right now. Again, cameraman's had a couple too many mimosas at breakfast. So I like that, but you see how it looks over the top at the end here where the camera guy's literally just, you know, using too many, he's, he's, he's swerving. So here's where we would use the keyframes because we want the camera shake to slow down a bit there we'll bring it down to like 15 mellow it out so now when we land we start out with that crazy shake but you can't notice it because we're actually pushing but once we land it mellows out a bit and that's that's pretty much how you film to be honest i don't think i've ever made a tutorial in any skateboarding game you know i've never made a skater xl tutorial to my knowledge Never made a session. To, oh, whoops. Never made a session tutorial. So this is 
new to me. I didn't really want to make a 45 minute video explaining the ins and outs of it, but maybe that is what you guys want. Um, so let me know. Give me honest feedback. Damn it. Give me honest feedback on this video. Let me know if I'll answer as many questions as I can in the comments down below. Let me know if it was informative. Let me know if you fucking hated it. Let me know. I'm trying to, trying to better myself as a YouTuber. Okay, bye.